counts of low carb, and on this episode, we're going to interview Gary V's personal trainer and coach, Jordan Syed, coming up next. Elizabeth Countess of Low Carb, and on this episode, we're going to interview Gary Vaynerchuk, or Gary V, his personal trainer, Jordan Syatt, coming up next. But first, before we dive into that, make sure you dance your fingers down, click like so others can see it, click subscribe, and sign up for my free weekly keto diet meal plan down in the description link below. And you can also check out all of Jordan's amazing YouTube channel, podcast, his weight loss tips are phenomenal. Well, let's go into that interview. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth Countess of Low Carb and I'm here with Jordan Syatt. I am so excited to speak with him. Y'all know he is Gary Vaynerchuk's former trainer. He is just the world's greatest trainer in my opinion. I've been following <laughs> him. I love Jordan's content and I wanted to interview him to talk today a little bit about weight loss success and how we can start incorporating Gary V's former trainer into our own personal lives using some of his tips and techniques to get helpful. and. Through my weight loss journey, I look for brothers like Jordan to help help a sister out and help a brother out. So welcome, Jordan. I'm excited you're here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. So for people who don't know you, and I talked a little bit in the intro about it, but you are Gary Vaynerchuk's former trainer, going to be soon be back so, to training. Can you yeah, explain a so, little bit? Yeah, so basically I, I coached him for three years, for three years straight, literally seven days a week, every single day. And, uh, and then we wanted to re-up, but I was like, I need a little break. So I'm taking a three-month sabbatical right now. And then, uh, and then I'll go back and forth with his. So his coach before me, Mike Vacanti, we're going back and forth every three months. I love it. I love it. And so you have your own business of where people can find you on your YouTube channel and your podcast, which I'll link down in the description link below if people want to know more information about you. Uh, Y'all, if you're going to binge, binge on Jordan's <laughs> podcast. I was sucked in last night listening to all of his podcasts. They're really, really good. So Thank you. Thank um, you. So what are your most important lessons that you've learned from uh, training with Gary and coaching Gary Vaynerchuk? What, what was your biggest, what were your biggest takeaways from working with him? Oh man, there are a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. I mean, so let's see, in terms of, it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. When, when I was it was probably about three, three to four months in. Um, and just keeping in mind when you're, when, when you're coaching Gary, like I was with him seven days a week. So it was like wherever he, if he was in Hong Kong, I was in Hong Kong. If he was in London, I was in London. If he was in Ireland, I was not in Ireland. Yeah. It, was, it was every, every day, seven days a week, traveling more times in hotels and airports than I was in my own apartment. Um, and I remember we got off the airplane. I forget where we were. But it was like two in the morning. It was D Rock, Gary, and myself. And Gary just sort of sidled right up next to me, and uh, and he he sort of he just smirks and he goes, "How hard were you working before this? And how hard are you working now?" Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I, it was interesting because before I started working with Gary, I I like I owned my own business before then as well. And I always sort of wore like my, how hard I was working as a badge on my, yeah. on my sleeve. I was like, I work hard. I'm an entrepreneur, da, 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 all this stuff. But then when I started working with Gary and, and seeing how hard he worked and how hard his team worked, I realized I was not working anywhere near that hard. And, um, and it did a couple of things for me, but it gave me perspective for both business, but also fitness. And I know a lot of people, they think they're doing everything right. They yeah. think they're working really, really hard. They think that they're being super consistent with their nutrition. They think that they're being super consistent with the gym. And they almost wear that like a badge on their sleeve. Like, I'm doing everything right. It's just yeah. not working. I swear I'm doing everything right. There's something wrong with me. And, uh, and it, it, sort of, it gave me a huge lesson that like a lot of people, they, they think they're working. And it's not like a malicious intent. They're not lying. They actually believe that they're working really, 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 really hard. And they might actually be working really hard, but oftentimes it's in the wrong direction. Like if you're working really hard in the wrong direction, you're still going to go the wrong way. And like, I think a lot of people, they don't realize that they're either not working as hard as they think they're working or they're not doing the things that they need to be doing. Yeah. So what do they need to be doing? What is the things that they need to be doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so, I mean, basically if let's say i mean if we're going to talk about weight loss right yeah. we're going to talk about yeah. fat loss mm -hmm. no i mean it's number one is going to have to be like making sure that they're eating an appropriate amount right R regardless of how they're eating whether they're doing keto whether they're doing intermittent fasting whether they're doing paleo whether they're doing uh, a vegan lifestyle whatever it is they need to be eating an appropriate amount 
um, which is, it means from starting with their total calorie intake, it has to be an appropriate portion. Um, and so I think a lot of people think that, well, okay, so I'm doing paleo or I'm doing a plant-based lifestyle. And so I, I'm, but they're not paying attention to how much they're actually eating. Yeah. So like they can be eating in this very healthy way with very whole foods, but like they're eating too much. So starting with making sure they know how many calories they're getting in on a daily basis. Um, and then also exercise. And, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people way overcomplicate that. I just made a post yesterday, like the most important one that I think is massively overrated is just walking. But like, I think yeah. a lot of people really, really, overcomplicate this idea of exercise to the point where it gets in the way of them doing anything at all. Um, but in terms of, of fat loss and weight loss is really calorie control, something that you can do consistently for a long period of time and, and exercise on a consistent basis it could be like two to two to four times a week. is plenty. Sweet. So somebody, you worked with Gary Vee. He's super busy. You're super busy. I mean, traveling, international travel, That you're a ro- road dog warrior. Like, <laughs> to do that, like, that is, my husband travel, used to travel a ton, and it, it's a rough lifestyle. How, do you, how would you suggest somebody who's busy like Gary Vee, like yourself, if the excuse or the lie-based thinking is, I'm too busy to work out, how do you work in workouts if there's literally no time in the day to do that? Yeah, I mean, it's tough and it's it's very very tough. But I mean, and Gary says it best. Gary loves talking about this because like we literally we just did a podcast on this with him the other day where he was like, "Listen, like if if you think you have no time, he's like, I promise you you do. Like if if I can fit it in, then you can fit it in." And I mean, the I think probably one of the coolest things about what we did with Gary is Gary decided that he wanted to work out 7 days a week. That was, that was his decision. And both myself and his previous coach, Mike, were like, you don't need to do that. It's actually like, it's honestly, it's a little bit stupid. Um, and, and he was like, no, 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 I need to do it every single day. And at first I thought it was stupid. But what I realized after, after probably about like three to six months of working with him was that when Gary said he wanted to work out every day, he wanted to make it something that he just did, like brushing his teeth, showering, like what, just something that you do every day. So it's no longer like a special event. It's yeah. no longer like something that you have to save time for. It's like, no, you're, this is something you do. And um, it also gave us a huge amount of leeway because if there was a day where he only had 15 minutes or there was a day where like he just, he didn't feel very good. We could go in the gym and we like did just flexibility work, just a little bit of mobility, just a little, maybe a little bit of walking. Literally, there were times that we did that, but it wasn't necessarily about having the most kick-ass workout every single day. It was just about getting in there and, and making it a habit so that you, like, realistically, you only got about three or four really great workouts in a week. The other ones are more flexibility and mobility and walking and stuff. But mm-hmm. because we were in there every day, because we made it a daily habit, yeah. it allowed him to just make it something he could do consistently and if he had to miss one or if it wasn't a good workout we could always make it up the next day and i think that's really where if you struggle with it because you're traveling so much i mean i mean i i I know the travel game like i know the travel game i understand it it's like there's it's it's more exhausting a lot of times than it is necessarily um busy per se Mm -hmm. and like there's time when you get to the hotel like you go up to your room like you're sort of just moseying around for a little bit like whether it's like you want to take a nap or you just want to sit down and go on social media like you take like you should shower and the shower could take 20 minutes but the whole process takes an hour instead it's like there's time like there's a hundred percent time where you could go to the gym you could do a 15 20 minute workout uh and again like that i think that's where a lot of people have misconceptions is they think that it needs to be a 45, 60 minute plus workout. And it doesn't like, it really doesn't have to be that long. Yeah. That's, oh, that's such a good point. And the video where I found you, Jordan, is that um, everybody can go check out in the description link his YouTube channel and his podcast was you talking about you quitting with working with Gary Vee. And I I just thought it was so profound, that video. I'm going to link it down below because I want everyone to go watch that video. I just thought it was such a good, the way you speak about this, just incorporating in as a lifestyle is so encouraging, is so motivating. And it's also a different narrative than what a lot of people speak about, like yeah. making it drudgery versus making this a sustainable long-term solution uh, for people. And for me, that's making this lifestyle change of a hundred pound weight loss journey of how can I make a major lifestyle change? Um, and you just making one of going on this three month sabbatical. How does someone come up to the point of making a major lifestyle change? Like you just gave, you just walked through one, like you're still walking through it of, you know, switching jobs basically. How, how does a person get, to that point to make a major lifestyle change. Like, do you have any tips so, on that? So, and I would just want to clarify, are, are, it, 
is the question basically like, how do you get to a point in which you decide like, I need to do yeah. this type of thing? Yeah. You know, th and this is something, and especially if you, you listen to the last few of my podcasts, this is something I'm very, very interested in. I actually just spoke about this in Austin, Texas. Um, it's this idea of a moment, right? This like, we, there's this moment that really like, uh, we hear people who like out of nowhere, that they were hundreds of pounds overweight. They had a very unhealthy lifestyle and all of a sudden just like something yeah. clicked and yeah. everything changed. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so interesting to me because on one hand, we have people who've had tremendous success doing that. They've completely changed their life cold turkey, just like out of nowhere. And then on the other hand, most fitness coaches and professionals say like, slow and steady, slow yeah. and steady, like don't go. But yeah. what's interesting is a lot of those fitness coaches and professionals are the ones who kickstarted everything with like a huge drastic switch. And it's one of the reasons why I'm very hesitant to say there's not a there's there's no value in something like this. Mm -hmm. But the, the reality is I don't think that we can make a synthetic moment. I think it has to be organic. It has to be to that individual. Like we can't recreate yeah. this fake moment that is all of a sudden going to make someone go cold turkey. Mm -hmm. I think that if we're going to if someone is going to do something in a more synthetic environment, then it does have to be more slow and steady. But if someone is going to do something where it's like a, a an organic like moment, which which interestingly I think is is almost always fear based. This is what I've been finding. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get to the point in their life in which that when they have this cold turkey change, when they, there's some type of fear. And yeah. I, I've spoken to a number of people on this, and I, I would love to hear yours as well. And there there's some type of fear in their life, whether it was a fear of dying early, a fear of not being around for their kids, a fear of, of like not being able to function, a fear of being judged. There's some type of intense fear that gets yeah. to a point in which they're like, I need to make a change. And that's why I don't think it can be created like uh, yeah. synthetically because like that's, you can't do that. What I do think can happen is I do think that through talking about it and through like podcasts like this and through, we can help people get to that moment more quickly we can help people maybe realize what could happen if they don't make that change so i think putting out information like this is so outrageously important because it might help someone get to that moment um but but otherwise like if if you don't have that that moment on your own i do think making these small slower changes can be super super valuable whether it's mm -hmm. some just counting your calories. And, and I, one thing I've realized is that sometimes just counting your calories can help create that moment because people have no idea how much they're eating. Mm -hmm. Like they have no idea. And, yes. and I'll, I'll be the first to say like, I don't think people need to count calories for the rest of their life. I don't think it's something you need to do forever unless you want to, in which case is amazing. But I think what most people don't, if, if they count calories for literally seven days, if they honestly track their calories for just seven days straight, exactly how much they're eating, most people are like, oh my God, like I had no idea. It's, and it's completely just, it's out of their, it's out of their conscious. Like they don't, they don't realize it until all of a sudden they start being aware of it. It's like, oh my God, that was a food. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lack of self-awareness. I like, I, I consider myself pretty self-aware of like knowing like, and being like, holy S that was just a massive <laughs> quantity yeah. that I didn't even know that I didn't know that that became such a norm to me to eat that much that, that looking at, it, I'm like, that is a lot of food that I just, yeah. And, and a lot of times it's not even, it's not even in a single sitting. Like a lot of people sort of imagine that to be yeah. like, well, I'm not sitting down and eating these massive portions. It's like, it's usually not. It's usually the culmination of what you're having throughout the day. And you don't realize the little things. I call them, I call them LBTs, licks, bites, and tastes. Yeah. Just like little things here, little things here that like you don't realize. We think like, oh, those are just a small little thing. It was probably only like 25 calories. Meanwhile, it's like, no, that small little thing was realistically probably like 150, 200 calories. Yeah. And yeah. you have a bunch of those over the course of the day. You had 3,000, 4,000 plus calories. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Totally, 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 totally. That's such a good point. So what would, be, um, what would be the best tip for somebody who wants to lose 100 pounds? Do you have some suggestions for that of like, not just like a little bit, but a lot. <laughs> you need to yeah, lose yeah. a lot of weight. What would be some of your suggestions for that? Oh, my first suggestion 100% would be to just track your calories for, for three days. It doesn't even have to be seven days. Like, just track your calories for three days. See how much you're actually eating. Mm -hmm. um, I'm always hesitant, uh, and I'll tell you a story. I'll, uh, one of my favorite stories to tell. Uh, when I first started 
nutrition coaching um, in Boston, because I used to live in Boston. Uh, one of my first clients, her name was Dawn. And she walked in, she walked in the office to sit down. We were doing in-person nutrition consulting. And, uh, and the first thing she says when she walks in the door, she's like really, really Boston, a hard Boston action. She's like, you're not going to be able to fucking help me. That was the first thing she said. And I was like, I was like, sort of taken aback. I wasn't <laughs> expecting it, but I was like, yeah. okay. And, and I was like, why not? And she was like, I, I'm not going to eat any. Like, okay. Like, and. I remember I said, you don't have to eat vegetables. Yeah. And, and that was the first thing where she was just like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I was like, listen, can you lose fat without eating, eating vegetables? Yes. Would it help if you did? Probably, but you don't have to. And she was like, okay, okay, keep talking, keep talking. So then we went through the whole thing. And basically what happened was now she's 70 pounds down. She's maintained 70 pounds wow. weight loss for, for the last like five, six years. But what happened was, a lot of people, they don't, they don't like this idea of eating vegetables, right? They're they, they, like, well, I don't want to eat vegetables. I don't want to eat this stuff. So I'm very hesitant to say, just add more vegetables in your diet or add whatever, because some people, they don't want it. What was interesting though, is after a while, Dawn said to me, she, in that meeting, she was like, mm -hmm. she, I was like, so tell me why, why do you feel like you've been struggling with your weight loss? And she was like, well, you know, I, you know, I just get so fucking hungry all the time. And I was like, okay, like, how do you think we could do this without you getting so hungry? And she was like, well, I know I could be eating more fruits and vegetables. Da, da, da. And I was like, no, 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 done. No vegetables. We're not going to eat any vegetables. And she was like, no, but I mean, like I could eat some vegetables. And I was like, no, no, you said you're not going to eat vegetables. So let's not eat any vegetables. And this was like really taking her like from the opposite. Like yeah, someone, yeah, no yeah. one had ever done that before. And, um, and eventually she spoke about the vegetables she would like and that she would eat. And so I'm always hesitant to say you have to eat this or you have to eat that. Cause usually it puts people on the defensive. Yeah. So, so that's why I'm a huge proponent of just tracking your calories because what you can do is you can see how much you're eating of the foods you like to eat and then realize, okay, well, I just need to sort of reduce the amount. Mm -hmm. And so then what will happen is people start to reduce the amount that they're eating and then they're going to realize like, okay, like if I'm just going to eat donuts and pop tarts and all this stuff, then I'm going to be really hungry. So I'm like, okay, so what has very few calories? Oh, great. Strawberries only have like 150 calories for a whole pound. So like they start adding more in and then like, oh, wow. Like, a sweet potato or as this or like oh wow it's like vegetables it's, then they start to on their own by their own choice add these foods in mm -hmm. because it'll help reach that goal versus me or somebody just saying you have to eat this you have to eat that so yeah. i really think just tracking your calories for even just 72 hours is going to be enough to really just spark a change where you start paying more attention to your food mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. And I was watch, looking at your Instagram account and you talk a lot about deadlifting and lifting weights, <laughs> which I love because I've gotten into lifting. Um, it, it, with your inner circle, do you talk about lifting in there? I know you have an inner oh, yeah. circle program. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we get, that was what I was just in Austin, Texas for. We have an annual mm -hmm. retreat. So, uh, just, and yeah, we like, they have monthly programs, workouts, everything. Yeah, absolutely. And that's in your inner circle program. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And girls can do it. A lady can do it. Not just dudes. It's about 75% women. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. It's about 75% women. Yeah. People ask me weightlifting routines all the time and I'm like, here's what I do. But like, it's not like, anyways, that's a super, super helpful resource. I will put that also in the description link below too. Cause I, weightlifting is my jam now. Like I really I find it. it such a stress relief. Like, yes! yeah. And, and so I wear little cute pink gloves. <laughs> yeah. Have you been deadlifting? Um, I, I, no, I've been doing smaller weights. I used to back in the day. And so that's my okay. goal is to get back into deadlift, like doing that. I'm slowly right. getting back. Like we have a gym here at our house. And so I'm trying to get back. Like I'm scared. So <laughs> what are you scared of? Um, that'll hurt myself that I will okay. do it. not right. That I'll your technique myself. might not be right. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's work on that. You send me your technique videos and I'll have a look. Are you serious? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm schwitzing over here now. <laughs> I love it. Well, everybody, make sure you give this video a big old thumbs up. Make sure you go check out Jordan's YouTube and his podcast. His podcast is amazing. I listened to your podcast where the woman was talking about binge eating. And my viewers yeah. know that binge eating has been a huge part of my story about cutting that off, like <laughs> cutting that off. Um, and that that's super, super important. Do you have any tips for people who are binge eaters or have, who have, an unhealthy relationship with food to try to heal that relationship with food. Yeah, I think probably one of the best 
pieces of advice that I've been able to give that I've gotten a great, great feedback on from literally thousands of people is, and so actually, first and foremost, if you struggle with binge eating, do not count calories. I know it goes against what I was saying before, yeah. but if you struggle with binge eating, counting calories can, it, a lot of times it exacerbates it more. So I would yeah. not track your calories, um, which it, it just goes to show you there's no one size fits all, mm-hmm. right? It's like some yeah. people are always like, you have to count calories. And other people are like, no, never count calories. Like it's different for every person. If you struggle with binge eating, do not count calories. Um, also, what I would say is this one, it's sort of like, have you ever, you know, walk by a, a, a fire alarm and you want to, you just want to pull it just because you're not supposed to. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like, it's just this like innate human desire. Like, we're just like, I want to fuck that thing. Like it's, so one thing that I would very much say is if you, if you're having an urge to binge, mm-hmm. I think one of the worst things that you can do to yourself is just say like, is like, say no, 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 no. Because what will happen is the more you say no to it, the more that urge and desire will sort of increase. Yeah. So what I've started doing is, and I, one of my most popular videos on YouTube is, discusses this, but basically I, I call it the 20 minute rule where once you start to have a desire to binge, say, I can, if I want to, in 20 minutes, I'll have a binge, I'll binge, I'll go off, I'll eat mm-hmm. as much as I want, but just wait 20 minutes. If I wait 20 minutes and at the end of 20 minutes, I still want to, then go for it. But if at the end of 20 minutes, you don't want to, then you don't have to, it's up to you. And so what that does is it gives you the opportunity to be like, okay, if I want it, I can. And, but let me just wait 20 minutes. And usually by the end of the 20 minutes, that impulse desire, yeah. that, that emotional impulse is gone. And it, it's really, it's, if, it's interesting. If you look at the, the research on willpower yeah. and, and motivation, a, a lot of it is just, it's impulse driven. It's emotion driven. And so instead of just saying no, 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 you say, okay, I can just give me 20 minutes. And a lot of times that's more than enough to let, sort of let that impulse sort of fade away. Mm-hmm. Such a good point. Such a good point. Makes me tear up thinking about it. <laughs> that's, that's really a helpful, a helpful and helpful suggestion for sure. For sure. For yeah, sure. Glad. Well, thank you so much. We've, we've run out of the end of our time. You've been amazing and have been an awesome guest sharing your weight loss success stories with us. And I, I am so excited to see where the next three months with your business takes you. I know that with your YouTube, your podcast, you're putting out the amazing, helpful content for people on this weight loss journey. So thank you so much for being here and sharing. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And again, seriously, send me your deadly videos. I'll have a look. Okay. I, I'm going to take, I'm going to take you up on that. Thank you so Good. much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. If you love this video, make sure you dance your fingers down and click that like button, click subscribe and sign up for my free keto diet meal plan down in the description link below. All of Jordan's amazing um, YouTube videos, podcasts, that is also in the description link below. Go check his stuff out because it's really, really good. Bye guys. See you next time.